Well, hello there, guys and girls. Welcome back to my room. My name's Mikey, and it's time for another tutorial. All right. So today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Firstly, thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers on the channel. That's mental. I'm so super pleased. But more importantly, uh, I asked you guys what you want to see going forward. And one of the things was do a piece of fan art in real time from start to finish from scratch and all the different stages and things I think about with the drawing. So that's what we're going to do. Follow along at home if you'd like to. This is going to be a longer video and I'm probably going to split it into about three parts. Pencil, line art and colouring in on Photoshop or something of that nature. We'll see how we go. If you want to get yourself some super cheap printer paper if that's how you're going to be doing things at home. I'm going to be using a few sheets on the table so that uh, it creates a soft surface to write on. If you have just one sheet of paper down on the table, it's still a really hard surface. Your pencil's not going to work very well with it. And if you're wondering why I'm doing everything at a skew if angle this way, it's simply because um, I work in a very limited amount of space and I can't fit a sheet of paper this way on my desk. So I always have to work at angles these days. There you go, you've learned something. Um, super cheap mechanical pencil. This is just a disposable HB paper mate. Uh, what other things do you need to know? Get yourself a cup of tea in the background. Mm. Delicious. That's going to be one of the most important things. And other than that, let's have a quick look. Um, everything's in frame. I'm recording on a camera phone as ever. And I thought the character that we could do, because it's been one of your requests, is Cindy, the mechanic from the Final Fantasy XV uh, series. Also, I had a Let's Play on it, but it kind of petered out. So let's see how we go. Now, firstly, you need to do for prep is um, be set and ready to draw. Have your space. Have your cup of tea. And then what I like to do when it comes to doing character designs is I type in the character on Google. Here we go, Cindy. And then just bring up all the Google image search on, on her as well. So if I've got this uh, constant reference point of loads of different Cindy images, it's going to help inform your design, even though you're putting your own spin on it. So that's the introduction over. Let's get into getting up a design. Now, my versions of characters tend to be a little bit more um, rounded, curvy, and voluptuous. And I'm going to go ahead and try to create a Cindy character design that fills up most of this page is fairly simple so that we're not bogged down by too much line work and these episodes don't end up lasting forever and ever um, but also just designed enough to actually be a proper piece of fan art and hopefully give you guys an idea of my whole process so as you know I like to start from the head and I'm gonna just go up here and start off with my kind of head circle now what you guys probably know throughout various tutorials is that um, there's all sorts of building blocks that you can use to build up a character of your own. And I've gone over these in lots of detail, so I'm not going to spend too much time separating out, separating out every little thing that I'm going to be doing uh, for this episode. But you can kind of get the general idea in that what we've got going on is a circle and a face that drops off of the bottom. These are our building blocks. And one of you guys have asked me in the uh, Draw of Mikey episodes, whether I actually personally need to use these building blocks all the time or whether or not I kind of just have an idea for the human form and shape. And uh, yeah, you do after a while get used to things of a human shape and how it's going to be uh, with its design. But it's nice to kind of bring the building blocks in every now and then just so that you're keeping yourself on point, so to speak. So let's just make sure that's all in focus on the camera phone and continue on. So because this is going to be a real-time one, I'm basically going to be talking all the way whilst drawing. So I'm not sure how uh, polished or great this image is going to be. So what I like to do with these character designs is get the spine in, understand the flow and the weight of this particular character. It's going to be dropping off in that direction for me. And I'm keeping my pencil lot marks really light. My hand's quite far up the pencil because I'm not doing any uh, detailed elements just as of yet. And I'm going to be dropping in that rib cage shape. It just comes down like so, back up like this, like an egg, and then marking out the middle front area of that rib cage, and where the ribs themselves actually split off to do their own thing. And understanding the skeleton and framework of your character really informs the design and the pose and the weight of everything. So if that's our kind of point down here, then this character's hips are going to be off over here, somewhere off the bottom of a piece of paper, something like that something like that nice and wide which means everything's going to be kind of brought in down from here to here and that's a ribbon or band where the tummy's coming back so you can kind of just make everything meet up by just going out in and out 
like so. You've got your chest to hips ratio going on. And then in terms of the actual rest of the form and a frame, just going to drop on some shoulders about here and here. Let's have one hand reaching back, maybe up to the cap that she wears, this character, or behind the hair. Another hand maybe down the front in that kind of um, demure leaning pose that she often does <clears throat> in loads of the uh, cutscenes and stuff. So this arm for me is going to be indicated with a line that drops down there. And this arm for me is going to maybe come out here a little bit, but not too much. Stopping an elbow that's right foreshortened in front of us. And then the forearm itself is going to head right back. And then round about here, I'm going to have a wrist. So I'm just doing a circle. And then I'm going to have the hand come back up to the side of the head. So maybe this is where um, the little finger zone starts to come off behind the hand. All of the thumb and other bits of the hand are right down here. But it's all going behind the head. So I'm just mapping out a basic shape, a building block to see what happens there later. Let's make this forearm come back. Now, because I've got a great big elbow zone here, nice and big, and the forearm itself can kind of be described as that sort of tube that comes down. Just getting some different angle on the paper just to uh, get this all sketched in nicely. And then it widens out to actually create that arm area like so. There's all sorts of muscles that bunch up at the joints. And then it goes back in to be the forearm, or I should say the uh, bicep and area. The main chunk of the arm on the way back down. Plenty of bit just down here before the uh, elbow kicks in. And then the shoulder's obviously up here, round back. Lovely. Back of the neckline, meets up here, up along the jaw. And a lot of this is about understanding the silhouette, the lines of the different areas in the form, and just making sure it all works and it meets together correctly. Bit of the underarm just down there. And the rest of the chest is actually not following the rib cage. It actually goes up and out and does its own thing up here and up here when there's actually flesh and mass and material on top of it. So perhaps over on this side, this is just going to hook back like so, create just a little crease. And over on this side, things probably come up around about here, have another crease for the arm as well. So if we go down and follow this neckline back along here, I like this, along the shoulder line, I like this, and then up around this curve is going to be longer down than it is across. So it's a circle that drops into a curve point. And then actually, we've got again, an arm tube sort of shape that comes down about here for the fork, for the, um, not forearm, I keep saying that, the top of the arm, circle for where the joint's going to be. And then the rest of the forearm, there we go, goes off down here somewhere. So again, we've just got this kind of bump of mass where the forearm comes up in and here. Inside of the elbow joint's about here. Outside of the elbow joint is around about there. Comes back up here where we've got a bit of tricep. But mostly, this zone's probably going to be covered by a bit of boob as well. So, going back up to this chest zone, if I just start from where I've got this crease of the shoulder circles, the arms meeting in, I'm just going to create a curving line that goes over the front area of the chest, maps how that is, and then where I've got this rib cage zone, I'm going to know that one boob for this character starts around about here on the chest. This is, if you imagine, the zone where the boob itself is meeting the rib cage. A similar thing is obviously happening here on this side. And then the boob itself is obviously going to be mass that comes out and hangs off. Now I'm going to be doing a very busty version of Cindy simply because why not? I can. And I'm just going to make everything quite large and voluptuous, big curves that actually comes down them and comes up here, creating this line where the arm is forward. So where we've got these creases, if the arm was back, because the arm's coming forward across the chest, across the side of things, just going to bring that all forward as well. And then this boob's going to hang and be like a big kind of flower and water filled balloon, if you think of it as something like that. So it's going to drop down round about here and then come back up and then meet back up to where it meets on with the chest. So I'm just going to create a really loose curve, swoops down this way, flip that paper a bit, create a good, li good line and curve that comes up this way. And Imagine that it all kind of grows out from the top like that. So if I had to map this, I'd say that this is probably finishing to a point around about here where the nipples would be. 
Must be careful on YouTube, not allowed to draw nipples in, otherwise you get in trouble, or the video gets like marked as inappropriate. But that's where it'd be. And then on this side as well, a really similar thing. This boob is going to have a lot of mass as well that comes out. So it's going to sweep down away from the body. If this hangs here, following the curve of this rib cage, then this boob is probably going to hang up here. So I'm just going to have it sweep out in a really similar manner. And then on this part, just come down before really massing out something like so. Like this. And like this. Brilliant. Let's just clean up that curve as well. Sweep that up on the inside edge. And I've kept things really light before. And now you'll notice I'm getting dark with the lines because we've gone from all the building blocks and the frameworks and we're starting to create darker and darker zones where we have slightly more of a finalized idea of where all these shapes are and what they're up to. Just sweep that jawline down to create a bit of a chin point round about here. And worth just mapping in eyes and other features as well. So here's our halfway line of our character on this side. I'm going to drop a little bit below that. Make sure that I've got an eye line that's going to come in something like that. And then on this side of the character as well, I'm trying to think if she winks a lot in uh, the thing. I don't think she does. She just always touches her hat and does her weird poses. So we'll have this eye open as well, something like this. Lovely. And then I'm just going to start to loosely bring out zones where there's a hood of the eye just above here. It's going to be all sorts of eyelash and zone that actually thickens all of this up. So I'm just sweeping in loads and loads of pencil marks just to thicken it out and work on its placement a little bit. And then there's going to be plenty of eyelash bits start to go off the side like this. Just get a couple of them in. Coming down on the inside as well. And then a little bit to the bottom, where there's going to be the bottom of the eye. Just kind of bumped up a little bit by the cheeks, but essentially kind of facing towards us, the viewer, like so. Lovely. When it comes to the eye itself, obviously there's the old um, game plan. So it's going to be a kind of a circle of light somewhere down here that breaks up the shape of it, it's reflecting stuff. It's usually another bit of reflective light that comes off the other edge, somewhere around about there. And then once we get the pupils in, nice and large, you get to work on like all other dots of lights being in this area. So we'll kind of come back to that when we get round to our inking kind of stage. But we'll imagine there's even specks of light right up over the pupil edge, and that'll be great. Uh, as for the actual um, eyebrows and bits of Cindy, I don't remember them being too prominent or overly special. So I'm going to go up for where we've got the center of the face line, the nose. That's going to curve back around here and be part of the brow line. So I'm just imagining a curve that already follows up there. And the eyebrow is going to sit somewhere along here, which is great. And then a very similar thing happening on this side as well. So up around about here. And you'll notice that I'm keeping this quite rough. I'm still light and loose and sketchy and building up the pressure in the layers as we go on. Just making sure I keep standing up just to make sure that's all coming into focus nicely. And then now that I've got kind of the eye area in of this character, I'm just going to make sure that we've got a nose in as well. And that's going to sit somewhere where we've got this bottom of a circle line. It's going to sit somewhere just above there. And it's just going to be a little bit of a lump out. It kind of hooks back in. And the more that it hooks on the top, the more cuter and buttoned the nose tends to be for the character. So I've just got a bit of a hook lump shape going on there. And then in terms of like the character's smile or what we're going to do, I'm just going to get about two thirds of the way. So chin to bottom of the nose. If you imagine this gap, I've gone two thirds of the way up from the bottom. And that's really vaguely where I'm going to have a mouth. So a little dimple for the middle of the lip. And then maybe it's just going to kind of come out like so. Cheeky bit of cheek shape there. And then out the other side as well. She's having a good day. Why not? Cheeky little smile. So just thicken things up around where there's a bit of shadow and dimple where the cheek comes in. And then you know that you've got like this whole zone here, which is top lip, sometimes indicated just with a bit of a shape. And then the bottom lip actually gets to just, you know, come out and be much fuller as a result. Something like so. OK, so we've got some really basic bits mapped in with the features of the face. So I'm kind of happy. I'm um, pretty much with where all of that sits. 
I've got an idea of the overall body shape. I've got an idea of what's going on with these boobs, but because of their mass and their shape, they're going to actually change up a little bit. And where we've got the shoulders coming in, don't forget the collarbones meet up with these. So I'm going to bring some collarbone lines that come down and in. Round about so, there's going to be one here. And then the other one's going to sit around about here before going back up and over. And although it looks like I've created a very muscly shouldered character, we're not going to see uh, much of this because I think she's going to have her jacket maybe semi on, semi off, so that you can see more of her kind of bikini top underneath. But we'll kind of build into all of that. So on this side, I'm just going to start to go around and I'm always going all over the place, really, just um, neating, neatening up some of the areas of a body design, working out what's going on with other bits of anatomy, belly buttons are down about here, which kind of informs me that that tummy shape's kind of coming around here. The hips, of course, shooting off on either side, around about there and there. And with this kind of brow line, there's all sorts of hair and a cap that sits on top of the head as well. Now that cap doesn't sit, how to put it, right down at the ear line, which is somewhere around about here. It's not like a tight fitting situation. It tends to sit on top of her hair a little bit because her hair kind of shoots off out from under the cap. So this kind of cap line is actually going to be kind of where the top of the hairline might be as well for a lot of characters. It's going to sit around about here. And I'm mapping this cap line to where it meets the head because the hair's going to obviously kind of spring out from underneath it and the cap itself is going to be off doing its own stuff and ting. So let's give this cat a bit of height. Ooh, I doubt it's picking up on a microphone, but there is like, it's not amazing weather right now and there's thunder rumbling off somewhere in the background. But anyway, this cap height's going to be, just to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on in Mikey world, right up here and right up around. Hope you are having a go at home, everybody. Otherwise, you know, you're just sitting here watching me talk to myself as I do this thing. But it was based on your suggestion. So as I get this kind of cap, it's a difficult shape sometimes, kind of mapped into my head. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of re-say, thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button, you guys. And don't forget, you can always uh, get on Patreon and support me on there if you like these. Obviously, I do this stuff for free because it's YouTube and I like drawing and I hope you like drawing as well. But if you ever want to support me, you can get on Patreon and say hello on there. And obviously, you get patron-only rewards. But in terms of this cap design, we'll get it up and around like this. I've just mapped where the kind of the front of the cap sits because there's a bit of logo and bit, I think, that kind of comes up around this front end of the cap. And you'll notice I've not done the peak yet, the actual shade cap bit at the top. We're going to come back to that. This logo is like a big disc, basically. It's a circle, I think, of the garage that she works for. And then the rest of the cap shape, it's a bit of a tough angle to kind of work with, but kind of goes down or up, depending on how you're going to imagine we're looking at things here. I'm going to have a go at down and just see how I feel about that. Out like so. Just like this. Yeah, and I'm happy enough with that already. So I'm just going to bring that into something a bit more finalized as a form. This curves round. Peaks a little bit. And then comes back round on here. And again, I'm just going to give that an edge as well. And we're going to see the actual thickness of the cap from this side because we're kind of looking straight onto its edge as well. Back something like here. So we've got the really basic shapes mapped out for the cap. We know where the face is sitting. And now we just have kind of a go at her hair, which sort of sweeps out in a block towards the middle and then sweeps right out in this kind of old school retro vintage style just kind of off around the edges and probably covers most of his hand which is going to make this episode a lot easier to draw so i'm going to imagine these kind of triangular uh, block shapes firstly but just kind of go off around about here there's one bit that happens and then usually comes in freeze so there's another bit over here and then uh, another bit that's just kind of swooping in on this side as well something like that and then the rest of it kind of comes around here like some bangs Let's just get let that sweep out and in. And that out and in is going to be a kind of theme because it's all sprouting out from under the cap where the cap's no longer holding everything in place. So I'll get a few bits like that. Let's curve off here. Make that a bit smaller. Curve off there like so. And then the rest of the hair is kind of all over the place, really. It kind of does its own thing. So 
shoots off and down maybe in some bits around here, curves back in towards the back, comes back round, and actually wants to hook in some more just over here, but then the rest of it's actually going out and away, like so. And of course, sweeping out round the back on that side. Something like this. Just have it sweeping out from under the cap. And then on this side of things, it does a really similar thing where this still comes across on this side. So this is partly where we've got the hand being hidden already. And then down and in on the inside, more bangs, more bits of hair that kind of swoops in to frame the face, like that and like that. Really, I'm just kind of semi-making this up as I go along and just looking at the images of Cindy that I've got on screen. In fact, let's scroll down a little bit. Maybe I've got some better shots of the hair. Not really. It's all pretty much the same screenshot of the same cutscene. But it'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. You're not pigs, you're people. So let's go up round here. And I'm just going to have a few of the hair bits up and out. Because it's going to be, you know, disturbed by the hand that's kind of making its way back there. Kind of like that. And then the other bits just flowing up and around. And again, just kind of going all over the place. It's a bit more down by the back. Her hair, it's kind of really hard to describe actually, Cindy's hair, than it is going off anywhere else. So it's kind of up and about like that. And it's really kind of built up of loads of different strands and bits. So my hand's back far up the pencil and I'm just creating all these different sweeping zones and strands to batch up these basic hair shapes. That's obviously coming out quite a fair way. So Maybe there's a few kind of tufts and bits going all over the place. I've just split up some of these triangles so that they just make up a little bit more in terms of individual strands and bits of hair going off all over the place. But the triangle kind of zones that I go with really does mark out the main backbone of the hair shape, really does lump up everything I think we've got to express. So up around here, I need to make sure it doesn't get too confused because when it comes to inking, this might look like it's doing something in pencil, but you have to really understand every single line at the inking layer. So we've got the bits of hair that are coming up here, which is fine. And then bits which are kind of smooshed up because of the hand moving its way back. So I'm just going to have another bit come up this way around about here. This bit of hair has got to stop here so it doesn't meet up with these lines too much. Otherwise, it creates a really weird looking continuation of one form. And then sweeping down the other way on that side is fine. Sweeping down there as well. So but where I've got the hand coming in, you can see the hand coming off and doing something, but then it's catching all behind the hair. And then in terms of the bits going off up here, yeah, I'm going to keep that one, keep that curve going down as well. Yeah, good, I'm happy with that. So what's going on with Cindy's clothes and form and shape and everything? She has a big jacket to start off with. So I'm going to have this jacket maybe um, coming off the shoulders a little bit so it's going to be more kind of demure and attractive. So necklines down here, this sweeps going over here, this shoulder shape then is going to come back round. Firstly I'm going to make it not quite so large and masculine. Oh what a glorious time everybody you've caught me on the cusp of a brand new rubber. All really cheap stuff from the uh, shop. But you need to change your rubbers out every now and then because they go out, they go off, like out of date. So yeah, keep your rubbers fresh, kids. And that's not a sex joke, but it really does sound like it is now that I've just said that out loud. So follow the collarbone. That's what I'm getting at. And um, when it comes to certain angles on the shoulder, the collarbone line actually goes all the way up into the shoulder line. And I'm going to make the shoulder slightly more feminine and less massive. By joining up to the collarbone line, it becomes less of an individual monstrous thing all of a sudden. Now it's a bit more of a, a smoother curve. This neckline then doing more of the work to meet in. See how that's just changed her from a bit of a bodybuilder character on this side to a more demure lady line on that side. And I must do a similar thing here. Invert. This neckline's going to come up and in. And then this shoulder is actually going to be this collarbone as it goes up and around. Creating that shape off of there. It really helps make all the difference and really just calm things down when it comes to the shoulders because I do like a big combat style female character um, from time to time so I really do give them like a load of power can't help myself 
empowering women. That's what I'm doing. I'm not abusing it. So let's just go up here. Come back round. Just get this arm happening a little bit better as well, really. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's go one arm still in the jacket. Jacket off the shoulder of the other arm. Brilliant. Okay, so what am I talking about? We're going to keep the jacket up here. Uh, I'm going to start from an anchor point, i.e. a bit where the clothing's tight. And that is the wrist of this jacket, or the collar. Wait, no, the cuff. There we go. I'm remembering things. The cuff is a bit tight on her workman's jacket. So I'm creating a cylinder shape, which is going to indicate the bit where that just meets up with everything. Something like so. And then the rest of the material is going to essentially cover this arm all the way around here. And probably just fold up a bit where the jacket's going to be slipping off the shoulder around about here. So I'm going to imagine that everything's coming off the shoulder there. It's all folded up here, which we're going to come back to. And this arm's doing then the rest of the work. So this jacket kind of puffs out a bit. It's like a heavy duty thing, like a yellow leather, I think, or something. Or some other like quite tough material. But it's going to fold and flap around the forearm here, creating its own crease lines and bits. And then on the top side, it's probably going to be a couple lines of tension as it pulls, just one or two, like that. And then the rest of it's probably just going to puff and bag out as well. So it's going to get a little tight as it goes over the edge of the elbow. So this line's following where it's actually tighter against the arm. Um, but then when it comes to kind of being up on this side, it's going to obviously fold and crease a little bit. And then maybe pull fairly tight across the elbow. And then come back down off the elbow lump and then follow the underside as it kind of forms around the rest of the back of the arm. So I'm just going to sweep back up here and then create all these kind of lines that indicate the materials just folding up around about there as well. So in terms of this jacket, because there's all sorts of design and bit and collar and material going on, I'm going to just fold up a little bit this way. Now it's kind of hard to tell what I'm going for, which is kind of good because you can keep it confused and still get away with it. But this whole folded collar bit is where the jacket itself actually folds out as well. So that's all now coming right off of the shoulder. And it means that I've got material folding and tucking and doing all sorts of bits coming down off there, coming down off here and coming off there. It's creating all these lumps and zones, which kind of we need to deal with. That's going to hang to around about here because it's not an overly large jacket. It zips up uh, just under the chest. It zips up like midway up the tummy. So I'm probably have it literally just come down to around about here before it then just kind of goes off around the back, something like that. Probably going to have it, yeah, come down at an angle because it's going to be a bit lower on this side. And then, yeah, similar thing around here. I'm going to have this jacket kind of folding out around about here. So there's a big like fold of material over this part of the arm and then it's going to be swooping back up towards the shoulder somewhere out there. So let's go up and in and out and back and so on. And again, when it comes to kind of building up the design, I'm really using lots of different pencil marks and slowly building it up more and more. A loose idea, a light line, and then more lines come in and create uh, what I become more confident with as being the final part of the image. So that's all folding out for sure, and then maybe there's even a bit of that collar somewhere around there, like this. And then the rest of the material is going to be all smooshed up around this arm as well. So it's going to fold in hard down this forearm, another fold of material up there before that kind of meets up where it's still at the wrist like this normally. But that's down off the bottom of the page, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, lumps of the material as it's kind of baggy and folded up here and then I guess that's tightly going to wrap round off of this side but most of the work's happening up the back so that goes up down around about there and then the material itself is following up along the body as it goes around the back of the hip up there and that's how it makes its way back up here like so let's just have a look through the camera phone because I'm looking at a kind of an angle, so my head's not straight over it. So I like to look through the camera phone every now and then and make sure that I've still got some sense of proportions. Uh, neck muscles. Let's go down from this um, collarbone here 
up to the edge round about there, popping a line there, popping one over here as well. Most of this area is going to be in shadow under here anyway. Round about bar. And so because we've got most of the jacket out of the way, we've kind of cheated because there's so many folds and bits and it's a nightmare. We still do need to sort out a few other things, however. Uh, this jacket had loads of pockets and bits, so around about on this section here, there's probably like a folded pocket shape that goes off around about there. The rest is all kind of lost in that material here, so I don't need to worry too much. But we do need to get going with her bikini top thing that she wears underneath. So, why do we map out where the nipples are going to be on a boob if YouTube doesn't allow us to draw nipples on boobs? Because, you know, young kids watch it and apparently that's still a thing. We can't get over our bodies. Because we still need to know where the situation is for um, a bikini top to actually take care of things and pull the shape up. Now, earlier, I talked about the fact that these boobs are going to be reshaped a bit. And that's because... Because? That's because if they're hanging loose and free like they are now, Maybe if I'll just hang out like that, and that's absolutely fine. We'll scan that in later for a Patreon-only version of the artwork. But when we're making a much safer version of this, she needs to be wearing some more clothes. Now, I'm going to map a triangle shape when it comes to bikini bits. A basically a triangle that's mapped over the curving shape of the boob. So if we go and imagine that from this nipple line, there is a line that goes up here where the neck is and makes its way down over to this boob and I'm going to thicken that line out because it's going to be part of the bikini so it comes down to about here okay and I'm going to thicken that out as it comes down to about here my phone just ran out of recording space so I've just reset it for another video that we're going to combine together hopefully it's a flawless cut and then in a very similar manner from this boob here I'm just going to flip this paper around so it's easier for me I'm going to imagine that this gets mapped over the top a bit and then it's going to be a straight line up to this point over here so this one is coming out like so I'm giving that some thickness as well as material excellent let's come back down a little bit more Lovely. And now this is obviously going to be where I start that triangular shape up from. So this is curving round, as I've said just a moment ago, to around about here. And then on this side of things, also curving out to around about here. You see how I'm mapping that to the shape of this curve. And then in a very similar vein, it's going to be doing something around about here. Now this line is going to reach to about this point here. So that's probably going to be a fairly straight line where the material's taut. And it's going to curve up and around on this part of the boob right there. Again, I'm just flipping this page over so I get better curves. And then this line's disappearing off around there. And it's all kind of capturing itself. Now, what's actually happening then is this material's holding stuff up. We don't need to drop into such a point anymore. I can kind of actually curve this off now to create a line of material that's being held in place there. This is also curving in a bit more as it's held there. And then what it's doing is it's creating a couple of bulges. So if I imagine this all joins up in the middle here, this tries to capture everything. Now there's going to be a bulge of under boob because the boob is kind of being split up a bit. It's very soft. And there's the bikini zone and the outside bikini zone on either side. And it just sags just a little bit outside of this natural bikini line. It just bulges somewhat to show that this soft material, this flesh, is also doing its own thing. So it bulges just a little bit there. Bikini cuts in a little bit there and becomes its own thing. And do you see now how? As I keep building up and building up with this pencil, I started off with such light strokes and we're getting darker and darker all the time as we come to a, a more fully formed and fully realized image. This is how I like to work when I'm trying to kind of make things up as I go along. Whereas you'll notice in the other tutorials, which are 
just about teaching one thing, how to draw a face, how to draw a head, how to draw a shape. I really focus a lot more on the building blocks because I think the very, very early stages of when you're drawing, it's really useful to know that you can use basic building blocks as your starting point, your tool to get your character designs in. But the more you get used to it, the less you end up using those blocks. And what I found personally, because everybody's different as an artist and has their own variations on technique, but what I've personally found is that after I've gotten used to building blocks, I start to keep that really light and I let myself draw and draw until the image itself becomes a bit crisper every time, a bit more finalised every time, until I'm happy with what's going on. So we've got something that's a little bit like this coming off here and a strap top coming off there. So what have we got here? We've got boob coming out of boob onto chest. It's all creating its own shape. It follows this kind of line up here where it's still the top of the body, but that tucks into being the arm which comes down. We've got this elbow curve, and we're really looking at main focus points here. We've got this shoulder, I should say, elbow, that comes down here, and this line's going to tuck in over things a little bit for this arm, because round the back of this arm is where the tricep is. So that's going to be a separate curve that comes down and in. And then we've got our neckline up in here, happy there. We've just got the points of the hair. I'm just going to quickly re-sketch back in a little bit. And then we've got this zone of a face that's being highlighted out by these sections of hair at the top of this cap and the bangs that come in here and here and here. Then the next part of the face is it's held up by its jawline, framing everything. And then on this side as well, the bangs are coming back in. And then we've got the rest of the features on this side. In terms of the silhouette shape, we've got bits of hair spiking off around this side. That's all fine. The cap, we're going to add some detail to in a little bit. And then the hair up here that's getting tousled back by the hand. So maybe I'm just going to imagine there's a little bit of area of shadow that kind of comes in with the uh, collarbones about here and here. And collarbones are always much more defined on anime characters than they are in real life studies. It's just a weird thing that I've noticed. Anime love drawing collarbones in. It's like their favourite thing. And then coming up here, second favourite, one and two. And then coming up here, we've got the rest of the chest that comes out on this side because it's obviously curving up for the rest of the arm and this shoulder around about here. So yeah, that covers most of these zones. This is going to be in shadow. That's slightly shaded because of the muscle structure. Front of the chest goes down here. On the underside of things, there's going to be sort of loads of shadow zone where these boobs are, I'm sure. But then we've got a rib cage just where it comes back in and joins the tummy. Here's a center line because she's fairly trim and in shape. Here's the rest of the front of the abdominal wall just being slightly highlight highlighted. And then the hips themselves coming off. And maybe I can just fit in just about there, just the top of like some trousers, pants, shorts, and or knickers, just to show that she is clothed below view line. And probably just about get an edge of it right in there. Might not even make the final image because um, we might scan this in for colouring later and crop that out. But just to show that, you know, it's okay. Now down on this side then, I'm just going to reinforce some of that jacket design as well. So I'm just going to again sweep over the top, come back out here, because what I'm going to be doing is some final uh, inking lines on this. And I'm going to be uh, giving quite a range of inking levels, just so we can make a big point about that and talk about that in detail as well for the next episode. But if I sweep in here, make sure that I understand that this particular folded bit of material might be the collar. But this is a folded lump of material that still is underneath of it. And then it's twisted and folded because it's kind of all slouched down as it's come off of her shoulder and meets up with the arm. It's really kind of tough to kind of get your head around a lot of material as it deforms and morphs and goes under its own weight. And I guess I've given this more of a, how to put it, more of a material that's uh, not like a cotton, but a very heavy duty fiber as opposed to leather, because I've let this kind of fold in and roll down a bit more than probably I think leather actually would in real life. Then let's just get the under edge of the jacket just on that side. And then as for this side, just trying to have a think if this arm 
sticks out enough or if there's enough going on with this whole jacket shape and design. I think I'm just going to make this a little bit larger to kind of help with the idea of its foreshortening and movement. Because when I look at the picture overall, I've got kind of main focus points. We've got the face going on here. The cap we're going to work some more design into. The chest is obviously grabbing a lot of attention. But I think this arm's just not quite taking up enough space and material. So it's actually falling off a page a little bit now, which I hadn't planned for at Celebi. So with this brand new rubber, careful, just going to rub all of this out like so. That'll do. And then just kind of build this up again, I think. Just a bit thicker, coming out just a bit wider, something like this. And then this whole arm shape and tone of folded material is actually going to just come right off here for me. Still kind of have that same journey, but just off the page a little bit more. And then all this material still there tucking in and doing its own thing as well. It's all just coming out much further, something like that. And I think that kind of zone and weight just help matches the rest of the shape and the form. So back up with this cuff. Just something like so. And then the material just around it. One fold, two fold. Up here on that side, like so. Where it just kind of meets him. And then there's like a bit of the arm is coming off here. Like some of that material holds. But also some of it just bags off. Like so. That's what we're getting at there. Just like that. And then off the top. Coming back out and down as well. Yeah, better. I'm happy with that. So, just re-getting this particular zone coming in. There's a pull here, as we've got this part of front of things, as far as I'm concerned, coming off the shoulder, which means all that tuck and material coming off the back. Still coming into here. I still want to, in terms of this silhouette, make this boob come out and break the line of the jacket coming down. So I don't want to come too far out. But it will go something more like that. And then just a little kind of folded material under the arm to show that that's all kind of coming into place. That's pretty much going to do it for there. So in terms of actual designs of bits, I've got like the basics down, the basic of the pose, how like the Cindy character is kind of sitting. I need to just worry about kind of designs on the jacket, how that works into the folds and the materials. Now I know that there's a design on the arm, which is a... Uh, Kind of a red stripe that goes around one of the arm pockets again you can't see these arm pockets pretty much which is fine but that red stripe design is probably going to intrude a little bit down on that side around about there i'm going to get it in on that edge just to show i'm at least thinking about it even if it's not strictly all array down that side and then i think she's got some I'm just having a look on these google images like some white stripes as well yeah, it's a pair of go faster stripes down the edge of the jacket as well. So in terms of that, that's all right. I'll be able to twist them up in that on this side. We'll have it come along here, which is great. And having material or stripes on the jacket is just going to help emphasize the flow of the material and the way that everything's going. So there's one go faster stripe there. And there's the other. That's a good start. And then on this side of the material, I'm just trying to think about how this is all pulled in and stretched. I think the go faster stripes are going to go from outside edge to in. Even though ideally I want them to go this way so you can really cross over all the lumps of material. I don't think that's quite how the material works. I think it's stretching in a spiral action. So I'm going to start from up here over these lumps of material. Bumping a bit there and there. And then coming right across as it comes down like so and then down there and it's obviously going to do an immediately similar thing there okay so now you can see all this material is kind of twisted and pulled around her arm a bit as well which kind of really helps sell that point because she's leaning forward a little bit over towards us as a viewer um maybe just a little bit of 
just a shading line but i'll indicate there when we get to color just showing that everything's kind of bumped in as well just kind of tilting down a bit but i don't want to overwork things down at the bottom all of the effort and visuals are kind of sitting up here at the top so let's get back to this uh bikini line really quickly there's probably like a sewn extra lip or edge to everything it's going to go up there as a point and just separate out the main material that's not the straps of a bikini same on this side as well let's just flip that over and just get another sewn edge that comes in here and goes round off there like so and off down there and then I think we just need to work on this cap and then finish off a face just ever so slightly more. So neckline, a little bit wider just there, just for some reason. Maybe there's hair that covers that edge of the neckline. I think that does actually. So that's probably fine. And then this cap, I'm just going to click on some of these Google images and see what's going on here. Hammerhead full service station. Now I should know that because I've done a let's play, um, not all the way through, like the first one ninth or something like that of the game um and i have modified like the car in that and so on but that was a long long time ago since i did those let's plays on the channel and i will hopefully bring them back in the future but you know it's i just haven't got the time especially now that i've got that film cram another channel going on as well but let's not cross advertise so there's like a hammerhead shape basically that's going on here cuts down the middle of the circle into a point so i'm just going to create this kind of dip i'm imagining like a weird kind of almost like a bat logo like a really thin designed bat logo going on. But basically there's just a thing that comes down here in this design and then back up there. And then the full service auto part is in red and it's kind of like a hearty smiley mouth sort of situation. It goes up and around like that. And it says full service auto in there. I won't worry about those small details. And then up the top, Bit of a stripe for the hammerhead logo is going to fit in there. It says hammerhead around the top, around the outside edge of this particular zone. And then in the middle, it's got like a just another lump. And then there's like a crown logo as well. So I guess it's like a royal service stop, although it does um, modify the car that belongs to Prince Noctis. So it is technically a royal service stop. And thus it all makes sense. Well, we've decoded some of the visual mystery that is Final Fantasy XV. A let's play I really enjoyed starting, but never quite got round to finishing. And then there's an outside silhouette, which is in white. Which is just like a border around this particular design. Um, and then the rest of it's actually the cap. So there's like this plastic band that goes around the front of the cap. don't know if that's the thing that makes it, partly makes it tighter, because you can like... Um, do it up with notches on the back and then cindy's got like um spikes going down the side of it those triangular spike things so let's go down here i have no idea but she shopped at camden market and then there'll be one spike just off of there and these kind of pyramid spike things you know what i mean they kind of just go off and create a shape like that so that's about it for there there's this band here we've got the top of the cap this is the kind of yellow outline zone I was talking about that's over at the front of the cap firstly up and around and down let me know how you're getting on at home by the way get in the comments if you're um, following along with this and actually getting maybe your own artwork done or following along this tutorial it's a real-time tutorial so I guess you really can put the pace in if you've got um, a bit of time at home and uh, let me know how you're getting on with yours. Or, you know, go submit it on Facebook on my page or whatever you want. Just a pleasure having you along. And of course, again, this is based off of your suggestions doing another full-on real-time tutorial. Because it's a long time since I've done one. And uh, I'll probably do some more in future on Patreon because uh, that gets really popular. Uh, but I thought I'd do a free one on YouTube as well because it's nice to learn stuff. And then what I'm doing now is just a second line in. I'm not personally going to probably ink this one, but I'm indicating it because it's the kind of like second yellow sewing line on the cap, something like that. Anyway, the rest of the cap, let's close that particular Google image, comes back off and around down the side. I don't think there's much else to the design of it, basically. It's just different material around there. And then, obviously, 
just understand one or two of these hair strands a little bit more concretely down here out there sweeping in around there around the back sweeping out over here back in for another piece over here and then these guys are going off out again and then we've got a sweeping out bit here as these bits come up there oh that just about to work so this hair i feel like this hair is going more across than it is going down so i want to just change how these curves are coming in just a little bit bring that further in like so but otherwise they still work and then this bit going off around here kind of coming off here and doing its own thing from under there and we've got bits of hair up on this side over here and again just keep going over it so that these confused areas start to become more solid and more distinct and therefore when I come to the inking line it's actually going to um, make a good bit of sense comes around this comes in as well up here and then it swoops off down there this bit of hair is inside the palm of the hand this bit of hair is over the hand as it comes back up and is holding everything back and all these other bits of hair are just shooting off accordingly because the hand's pushing them up as it's sweeping back through the hair so up there and then a downward curved bit there but I think that's about it I think that's the only extra bit of hair we need to have so overly tousled as it shoots off and away okay so now I'm just going to go back over this arm just make this a little bit more concrete and finished these lines are not equidistant all the time they're actually going to be closer together towards the edge of this curve just to show the material is on a curved surface and then where we've got the edge of this arm is it kind of meets in of this material it's got that edge and that bump shape just getting more defined bit of a line around there up around here off around there just re going over these go faster stripes them there and them there nice and this material coming up with the inside edge again this collar is here and then i feel like I feel like where the collar is i don't know if this material goes all the way in so i'm gonna have a band of it stop about here and it might just be yellow material again because the collar is kind of brown about here on the inside edge much like it is here but i think this zone here and this zone here might be inside jacket material and that might actually be a little bit different again which is why i'm just kind of separating that in under this edge just remembering to put one of those red kind of stripe zone or lines and then around about here there's just not too much to say about the fold of material here sure it kind of bumps out a bit where that folds in place but it doesn't overly create all these lines like a thin shirt material would either so that's slightly thicker that shapes in there tucks up to the arm this is like a che checklist everybody tucks up around there this material fold here still a little bit confused i won't lie so this part of the collar comes out here and then this is where our zip is i guess so let's create just a few zip lines there and then on this part of the material that's going to be reflected right here as well got to try to draw this so it makes sense and that's sometimes the toughest bit i could do a load of abstract folds but um it wouldn't quite perhaps be right i'm not saying this is perfect either folds over the material there back down here and coming off around about there yeah that will do the trick tuck under there bottom edge of the material there we've got we know what this is up to you know this is curving around into some sort of pants or underwear that's curving back up bottom edge of the flow there that folds back quite aggressively this tucks round and in yeah i think that's it so let's just go back up to the eyes really quickly um we'd started off really loose here 
But now that we've got that light loose shape having built everything up, we can kind of ever so slightly just sharpen that out because we sort of know what's being indicated. Thin lash there, thick lash there, sweep of the eye, curve of the hood of the eye about there, happy with that eyebrow, happy with this eyebrow. This is kind of curving all the way back up and round as well. Again, it's just kind of sweeping to a point there, thin one there. But it is a thickness with a cheeky lash or two coming out the front. Sweep of the hood of the eye. Under part of the eye as well, just indicated by a thicker line. And then we've got the eye itself with these big reflective areas of light and the pupils in the middle. Nice and dark round here. So, yeah, I think. Bit of a blush, why not? That's pretty much it. Let's have one last look through the camera phone. Lovely. So I've been talking most of the time and drawing. It's just a simple piece of paper, a simple pencil. You can all do it at home. I really hope you've had a go. What I've not done is drunk half as much of my tea as I'd hoped. Mm. So I'm going to be doing that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. That's it. That's part one of three or four. I don't know. But that's part one done. How I like to get the pencil drawing for when I do a piece of fan art. I hope you followed along at home. Join me for the next part where I'm going to talk about inking and different line weights and different levels of depth and kind of how that's really going to make this piece pop before we scan it in and get some colouring done. Thank you very much again, everybody. I hope you all have a lovely day. What else should I say? Oh, yeah. Sometimes there's a Draw of Mikey episode on the Wednesday. I'm probably going to do the... Uh, inking part of this tutorial uh, for then in the middle of the week and then we'll have the colouring part of the tutorial perhaps next weekend so they'll all join together so it's not dragged out and then a DWM episode will follow back in place after there. Have yourselves a lovely day guys please like follow subscribe you know all the things check out my Patreon and support me there if you like um, but basically I'll see you guys next time round. Take care bye bye